Let us move into the next the module that is adiabatic switching or I can say adiabatic circuit. Now we want to know what you have studied in the previous lectures. So what are the previous classes and all we have studied? How it will be compare or how it will be different from the previous uh, modules or premium topics we can say. In the previous topics and all what we studied, we studied the, the static previously we have studied static CMOS circuits. Static CMOS circuits or uh, as we know that that has many advantages like such as uh, low power dissipation and the reliable operation and it will be availability for the computer audio design. So in this uh, also we have seen that the, all the circuit nodes will make a rail to rail that is uh, the transition from 0 to VDD for each switching event and the supply voltage VDD will be remain constant actually. But uh, this consequence, the output node in the static circuit say, how it will be in the sense like the output node will make a transition from 0 to VDD with the load capacitance that is CL actually. So uh, here because uh, you might have seen uh, the circuit was like this, this will be your uh, VMAS network. This will be your N mass network. Then the input will be given over there. This will be your VDD. There's a gentle circuit of static sigma circuit. This will be VSS. And here in the output, there will be a no capacitance. Right, as we know that. So now, as we know that the output will make a transition from 0 to VDD with the load capacitance. CL. So now in that we found already the energy, how much the energy will be there, that is CLL into the VDD square. This is the, was the energy will be drawn from the power supply. So out of this we, we see this is, will be the energy will be drawn from the power supply, but how much it will be stored, it will be stored how much this is drawn from the power supply. Right? The energy drawn from the supply is this much, but how much stored? Is there any answer? How much it is stored actually? Because uh, when the uh, input is equal to zero, the PMS will be on, it will be drawn, right? How much will be, will be drawn from per CL into VD square actually? But how much will be stored in the sense, like the half of the energy only will be stored, that is, E will be equal to 1 by 2 CL VDD square. This much energy only will be stored. This already we must have studied. This much energy will be stored in the capacitor and the remaining half of the energy will be dissipated in the P mass itself. Network. So subsequently when the output process this will be like from 0 to VDD. Okay. Now when I go for a VDD to 0 what will happen? The energy that was stored in the capacitor will be dissipated to the ground via NMOS network. So here very important thing is here, the power dissipation will take space because of switching event. The switching event is converted to heat. That is the, the main reason here actually. So 
you can see the important the main reason was is switching event is converted to heat and the switching event is converted into heat so which ultimately we can release to the environment actually because it is dissipating the power right as dissipating the power we can say so what we have to do for this so we need to reduce the power dissipation so what the circuit designers under that it they will reduce the the one was to reduce power dissipation they reduce the power dissipation so what are the techniques they use they can reduce the supply voltage this is we study then we can decrease the load capacitors decrease the load capacitors or minimize the switching events so these are the things only we studied in the previous topics or the previous uh, uh, lessons so now here there is a novel approach here there is a novel approach here uh, to achieve the energy dissipation below the limit because as previously as we seen the power dissipation will not go beyond this in the sense uh, less than 1 by 2 cl vd square the power dissipation will not go beyond that point if i use the previous techniques still if we want to reduce less than that in the sense beyond so not 1 by 2 beyond cl vd square actually so the novel approach is so what is this approach i said here this approach is to achieve energy dissipation below this lower limit this is limit of cn vd square c this is what very important so how it can be do, how it can be done this can be done with the help of the new class of circuit that circuit only is known as adiabatic circuit so now this adiabatic so here we need to know what is this this adiabatic is a refers the term which is given here that's a new term like kind of the new term right what is this adiabatic the adiabatic is nothing but the refers it's a thermodynamic process thermodynamic process that exchange no heat with the environment that is very very important so or otherwise we can say uh, in electronic wise if you want to say this is in the mechanical term it is like a in terms of the electronics right so else i can say in electronics way the system without power losses that is the meaning in with respect to electronics
next way if I want to say it's like a system without power losses. There will be power loss will be there, but the without power loss in the sense. So it's like as I mentioned earlier, it's a reversible logic. That is the very important logic we are going to perform over here. So to study that, so here uh, thing like a uh, uh, very important thing I'll say here. So as I mentioned earlier, so some of the points we noted here you can see the full swing voltage mode, the CMOS logic sites have been extremely successful for both the technically and the market shall live with that. So the switching power dissipation as I mentioned earlier, the CMOS circuit with the capacity load as lower limit of CL will be spread by 2. Now as you mentioned here next, the adiabatic switching circuit, the switching power, the dissipation below this lower limit. So this term okay, so the reduction of power dissipation will occur at the cost of slower speed of operation actually. So the very important that is why I mentioned here, it also allows the recycling of energy to reduce the total energy drawn from the power source that is a recycling value, that is a reversible logic we are going to do. So this is example as I mentioned here, this is what the switching power dissipation due to the charging and the discharging of a load and the parasitic capacitance. So here it is a simpler circuit which has in this uh, if your uh, pull, pull up network is on and pull out is on then it will be a, the charging current will be there. This will be charged over there. So that is why here we said uh, that uh, the dissipation, the power dissipation will be calculated or as we discussed in the previous classes, the power dissipation will be happened with the following factors like uh, this alpha naught is nothing but the switching activity factor, then C is nothing but load capacitance, various power supply, F is nothing but your clock frequency. Then here plus the summation means this will be your CL, right? The load capacitance, then there will be some the parasitic capacitance will be there. Where is the parasitic capacitance? Like uh, the node, node capacitance you can say. So that the uh, combination so the sum of the node capacitance and the load capacitance will provide a power dissipation this is what previously we studied in the switching power dissipation we studied the previous cases and all now what we will do let us go for the simple thing is like a conventional charging let us see the conventional charging and this is what we are going to see let us take a simple example Conventional charging a diagram like uh, just like uh, the resistor, then here one capacitor will be there. I connect to VSS, then here we are going to keep the supply connector that is plus uh, minus. So we are going to apply here that's right, like this, right? So now this is from 0 to VDD. So I can say this will be your resistance. This will be a CS. So here we are going to take a output in V out here. So example, this is a V out. Now we can say what will be the, the time. So now I can say at T is equal to zero. At a time T is equal to zero means at a time zero, the input voltage is zero in the sense the capacitor initially it will charge at time zero. The capacitance won't charge right initially no charge in the capacitance no charge in the capacitance initially okay so how it will be in the sense now when the time increases in the sense at time t is i mentioned right so we now keep we are increasing the uh, we ready now. Slowly we are increasing. How it will be there? The diagram will come like this. Say example, this is the diagram, right? You can consider this diagram. This will be is equal to T. Then this will be your uh, V out because we have to get the V out. V naught or V out of T with respect to T. Now, as the time T increases, what will happen? That means you are gradually you are increasing the VDR, just you are applying to VDD. When applying this term means your capacitor start to charges. Capacitor start to charges in the sense I can say the capacitor will be start to charges at one particular point of time, it will be 
constant like this, right? So this is I can say v out of t is greater than zero. At time t is equal to zero, the v out is equal to zero. I can say. Right? At t is greater than zero, so what I'll get now will be is equal to the capacitor start to charges. Now it is like a, it's going as like exponentially growth is going. So now we can say the v out of t is greater than d is nothing but v d d into 1 minus e to the power minus t by r c. Where here you can see this is the thing you apply here when t is equal to 0 then v out will be 0. When t is equal to 1 that is means gradually increase automatically the capacitor start to charge. This is the expression we will get. Now here we didn't uh, uh, found or we didn't check with the current actually because the same just we said at uh, time t is equal to 0 that we said. So now what we will do let us go with the uh, like a uh, with respect to current actually with respect to current we will go. So now what we will do uh, let me put here here is it. So now let us uh, so the current for something but i of t current. let us find out how it will be current actually this is about the voltage now what about the current actually here so let me say at t is equal to 0 um, the current will be starts flow initially at time is equal to 0 the capacitor will does not have any charge and therefore the voltage across the capacitor will be 0 that is what we see already then the current flow, how much the current flow, so simple I can say, I of t is equal to, the current is flowing, right? I of t is equal to, from the circuit, what is the current actually? I of t is equal to, I can say the current is flowing, like I can say R between and this to this. So, I is equal to P by R, so as we know that, this is nothing but P D D minus V out of T divided by R. So this is as already we know what is your V out because this is for at T is greater than 0 only there will be some amount of current will flow actually. So T is greater than 0. So VDD minus V out of T is equal to VDD into 1 minus E to the power minus T by RC. So substitute this over here. So we will get VDD minus V to D into 1 minus e to the power T by R C divided by R. Now we can simplify this. When you simplify this, what will get? Uh, so we we'll get us V to D by R into e to the power minus T by R C will get. This is the but over I of T. So we can say how this uh, the graph will be there now i of t graph so let me put a graph this will be your t this will be your i of t yes so what is i of t the i of t is nothing but vdd by r the maximum is this amplitude right the current maximum current is vdd by r you can see u to the power minus t by rc e power 0 when t is equal to 0 this is a maximum value I will get. When t is equal to 1, 2, we are increasing. So what will happen? Exponentially decaying. This will be exponentially decaying. Right? So it is exponentially decaying like this we will get. So now you can compare that uh, graph and this graph. So from this what you will do? You will calculate the power now. When you are calculating the power that is P of t, what is P of t? P of t is equal to I square of t into R. What is I square t? I of t already we know. Then I square t is nothing but uh, it is V d d by R into e to the power t by R c the whole square t R. Now what will be this? This will be V d d square by R square into e to the power minus 2t by Rc into R. The RR will get cancelled. Then finally, 
I will get as this is will be your fault, right? So it will like a very good square by r e to the power minus 2t by r z. This will be your power actually. So now let us see what will be the, the energy dissipation. The energy dissipation. So let us see the energy dissipation. Energy dissipation is something like this is power, power is like it's a finite, right? So energy dissipation is infinite actually. So 0 to infinity P of T into dt. That is energy dissipation finding the formula. So it is how much? 0 to infinity P of T is nothing but uh, variety square by R into e to the power minus 2 by Rc into dt. So this is independent it is not dependent on t, v d square by r is taken outside of the interval and 20 e to the power minus 2t by r c into dt. So now what will be this? Will be is equal to v d square by r integrate that will get us what will be this? Uh, will get us minus r c by 2 into e to the power minus 2t by rc limit apply the limit when i apply the limit finally i get as 1 by 2 cl into the c okay c into vdd square that is c is nothing but your load capacitance that is why rcl i can say simple as per this circuit i can say cl into energy dissipation now from this we can make an observation what is the observation we can make from this now the energy is dissipated to charge a capacitor is dependent of r or independent of r energy uh, dissipated to charge a capacitor is independent to R or dependent to R? It's a independent of this This is the one of the very important. See. In your circuit, I am having the resistor R, but even though if I use that resistance R, it is not affected. It is independent of your energy dissipation is independent to charge. When the energy dissipation to charge a capacitor is not dependent on resistor R. So that is a very important thing in your circuit hacking because as you know that. So this is the, the uh, we have to make a very thorough important point about that. That is why here we see this diagram central we are showing here. See for the charging, these two graphs here actually we done. This is about your voltage, this is about your Q charge graph. So same like what is the graph we the same similar kind of the graph only. This will be your current, this will be your charge actually. So adiabatic charging, this is what whatever we are saying, it's a adiabatic charging. So here we are using the source that is nothing but the current source is nothing but it's a time dependent current source. Which one? The source is time dependent current source actually. So this only will be used, that is IFT only is used to charge it capacitance C. So this circuit will be used to the model a CMOS circuit with the output resistance to drive the capacity load. So this is what we have seen but similarly one even here also we have seen the same similarly circuit. See like uh, VC of C in the sense uh, this is the simple concept I have shown uh, about like uh, energy dissipation is independent of R. So now we can see the adiabatic charging. This is conventional charging. Whatever we shown, 
this is where conventional charging that's the conventional charging this as i mentioned here normally how what will happen at a time t is equal to zero the switch this switch is something you just you think this is one switch uh, when time it t is equal to zero it's an open switch the capacitor will not be charged when the charging will be progress the current decreases and the charge will be increases means when time is t is greater than zero the current will be decreases and the charge will be increases because as we seen here previously vdd by r actually correct so because here this vdd minus the v out by r so here we see no the parameter see here i of t vdd by r so what happen as the charges increases that is greater than t is greater than zero as the charges increases i can say the i of t will be decreases that is your current will get decrease so that is why here we written the vc of t the voltage across the capacitance the function of the time the vc or v not of t also i can say vc uh, will be like a 1 by c into i of t then the average current will be i of t will be is equal to c into vc of t by t the average current then here we found the energy dissipation in r so now what we will do like uh, so let us go for the adiabatic charging here in the adiabatic charging only just here we found the average current from 0 to t then the energy dissipation in r the energy dissipation in resistance from 0 to t will be equal to t will be given by the energy dissipation that is r into r Zero to t i square dt will be is equal to r into i square of t, where the small t will be is equal to capital T. That is what here we take it. Zero to t will be is equal to t. So t into t. So that will be is equal to r c by t, where i square of t is nothing but this one. This one is nothing but this right. C into v c of t. You substitute over there, then we will get. So here the one more important parameter is T capital T here. Now we have to make an observation here, like uh, if that T is equal to first we can make that if this T is equal to R C. If I say, then your energy dissipation will be what? Then it be, this will be one C into V C square of T means it is a conventional. If T is equal to R C, then it will be a conventional charging means. Energy dissipation will be C into V D. That V C is nothing but you can say for example uh, we can make that V C of T is nothing but V D. So C into V D square. So if T is equal to R C, then it is a conventional charging. First, uh, second uh, case I'll go if the T is greater than R C means twice times of R C. That is two R C we given. If this T is greater than two R C, means we can make it as like a two R C. Then what will happen? Then this will become as one by two C V square will happen. So the dissipated energy will be smaller than the conventional case, the previous case. Then here we can make the dissipation can be made arbitrarily small. By further extending the charging time t, because see initially we made t is equal to R C, where R and t is nothing but a time constant. Where tau v is equal to R C, it's a time constant. Where R and C is a time constant. Okay, it's a time constant. So now t is equal to R C conventional. So t is greater than two C. So now keep on. We increase the t. If uh, t is greater than two uh, R C means if I take instead of two R C, if I make three R C. So automatically what happens? Still we can uh, reduce the energy. Right? The dissipation can be made arbitrarily small by further extending the charging time t. So means simple uh, step by step we need to increase the time. That is the meaning. Very important here. What you need? Step by step, we need to increase the time. So, what we have to do in the sense, for that purpose only, we need to use a uh, 
the pieces is so like this what is uh, linearly you have to in sense this is your zero this is your b so that it turns so slowly we have to increase so we can say that dissipated energy is proportional to the resistor and a smaller resistor will results a lower dissipation unlike the conventional cases so what are the observation we can make it in the adiabatic circuits here so the adiabatic circuits actually it will charge will be moves efficiently from power supply to the load capacitor by using a slow and constant current charging slow and constant current charging that source we have to use next thing is reversing the current source will cause the energy to flow from the load capacitance back into power supply so here this is what is it so we need to reverse the current source will cause the energy to flow from the load capacitance back into the power supply so that power supply must be designed so if you want to do in that way then we have to design a power supply to retrieve the energy fed back to it so such type of power supply we need to design so here this adiabatic switching circuits are required non constant non standard power supply and with the time varying voltage because in the previous day the conventional method the conventional cmos circuit sandal which used a fixed power supply only okay we are not used very very power supply actually fixed power supply only we use it is a constant power supply you can say it is a standard power supply but here adiabatic switching circuit will require here uh, it's not a constant power supply and it also is not a standard power supply with the time varying voltage a very important keyword here time varying like a ramp so that supply only will be called as pulsed power supply this is what we need to use so here it will be like this you are a uh, time now see that you have to apply like this in this way so this will be your time charging time period which get increases it will get charges how much time so you might this is pulsed power supply we have to give instead of uh, uh, fixed power supply so in the sense instead of giving this type of power supply example i'm saying right we need to give the power supply like this simple that is what we have to do this is fixed we can say this is fixed this is not fixed or varying we can say slowly we are varying here at a start zero or vdd only but here zero start only vdd you can gradually you can increase this is about the, the adiabatic charging the energy dissipation also we have seen then we made some of the observations also like uh, if the t is in this way so now in this circuit now here which i have shown like this in this actually what will happen the sense the output of the power supply will be like this see mm. okay so what i will do okay yes so in this case this will be a zero volt as i mentioned what about this this will be your pre charge i can say so during this time it will be pre charge what it will do here it will hold then during this time it will recover then during this term here it will break this is what will happen actually in the uh, very time very so from zero recharge it will hold recover then wait for the next again to recharge this is the nothing but your the output waveform of of a pulsed power supply this only is output now what to do let us go for the first topic from the adiabatic amplification circuit let us study about the adiabatic amplified circuit 
So this is the adiabatic amplification circuit which is mentioned over here. So what it will do this. So what is the amplification? The amplification it is a fundamental operation which will be performed by electronic circuits to increase the current or voltage drive. So to remember it's an amplification here what we specifically we need to say it's an amplification application is here fundamental operation performed by electronic circuits to increase the current of voltage drive this is the amplification now you can see here very important thing the circuit the symbol is this okay amplification symbol adiabatic symbol here you can see here it has this is your input this will be your output so this adiabatic amplification the circuit is consists of two transmission gate this i can say the transmission gate number 1 that is tg1 i will call this is i will call tg2 transmission gate 2 next the two n mos clamp is required that is these are the n1 and the n2 are two n mos clamps now here you can see the input and the outputs are dual rail dual rail means x x bar y e y bar we are having right that one we are calling as dual rail means zero logic zero x zero then the bar is one so i am having dual rail or i can say vdd also then here uh, same y y bar also i will get as zero vdd so here the inputs and outputs are dual rail which is encoded to avoid the use of inverter see because the inverter will get only either zero or one so to use of inverter we can use the inputs and outputs are uh, dual rail encoder now we can see this figure here let me take the operation Draw the diagram first. First transmission gate, right? This will be your transmission gate. Next, one more transmission gate. Then we have. Two clamp and mass. So this will be by and mass. This will be your and mass. Okay. Now we can say the inputs. So here the inputs and output. This will be the input as x. This will be the output y bar. Then this will be your y. then this will be your x bar then this is the x bar this is x then this will be your x bar then this will be x so i'll make it as this will be your tg1 this tg2 then i'll make this as m1 this this is m2 then here we are having the input we need to apply this is nothing but your va Okay, first step. So what we need to do first? We need to the input x 
and the complements are applied to cycle first case one okay the case one first let me write as case one here operation inputs you are applying first x is equal to zero and x bar will be is equal to one we are applying okay when we apply x is equal to zero and x bar is equal to x is equal to 0 let me say here x is equal to 0 then x bar will be is equal to 1 x is equal to 0 x bar will be is equal to 1 x will be is equal to 0 then x bar will be is equal to 1 okay so now what's happening here now when i do this uh, like what is this VA we need to know right what is this VA actually the VA is nothing but it is a slow voltage ramp from 0 to VDD uh, it's very simple if you want to say the VA is like this this is what 0 to VDD. This will be your VA. We are applying here. Uh, okay, so, so I yes, this is what we are applying. When you do that, okay, slowly we are applying. Just to think about from 0 to VDD. Now, which one all is on? Let me write here. When x is equal to 0, what about the n1? n1 is off correct n1 is off next what about n2 n2 is on you need to think here in the output y here there is a capacitance okay you, you assume us in this way this capacitance this side this side okay so now next what about tg1 now what about TG1 is on or off? X bar is 1, X is equal to 0, then TG1 is on. Because N mass also on, P mass also is on only. What about TG2? TG2 will be off. Now, if the TG2 is off, it won't pass. Because as we know that what is the, uh, we have to make a note. What is the, the importance of the transmission gate? Can you tell me the difference between the NMOS pass transistor and the transmission gate? Pass trans any pass transistor. The difference between pass transistor and the transmission gate. Anyone? Where the pass transistors, the output will be degraded due to threshold voltage. Because that is what we have seen previously. Like uh, for NMOS, if I take, we can be able to produce like a, a good zeros, bad influence. For PMOS, by passing characteristic, if I say it is uh, good at passing 1, but uh, weak in zeros. But uh, what about the transmission gate? The transmission gate able to send the entire the range of value from 0 to VDD without any degradation. That is the important the characteristics of transmission gate. So now the transmission gate will be it's a combination of the PMOS and the NMOS actually. So now here you can see the TG1, the NMOS, the X bar will be is equal to 1. This X is equal to 0 means the PMOS also will be on. Then the transmission is on. So this will be off. So now what happened? So if it is off because we are applying the slow voltage ramp from 0 to VDD we are applying. When the TG1 is on, what will happen the Y bar? So Y bar will be charging. Yes. So from this I can say the Y bar is charging. Correct? The Y bar is 
charging what about the y doesn't have value there is zero only the y is zero because initially there is no charging in the value so y will be is equal to zero so i can say from this uh, the circuit is energized here i can say circuit is energized right the circuit is energy is positive this is case one then let me go, go for the case two what is the case two actually we need to apply x will be is equal to one x is equal to one and x bar is equal to zero now you need to tell me what is n1 and what is n2 then what will be tg1 then what will be tg2 then what about your y that is y bar then what about the y so here in the sense simple i can say the y bar is charging in the sense capacitance is going from 0 to vdd right that is what meaning the capacitance now x is equal to 1 so let me put x is equal to 1 and apply now x is equal to 1 now apply so x bar will be is equal to 0 then x is equal to 1 x bar will be is equal to 0 x is equal to 1 x bar will be is equal to 0. When I do this, now we are applied x is equal to 1 we applied. When x is equal to 1 in the sense, now we see the n1 will be on, yes, n1 is on, the n2 is off. Same come for uh, tg1, so the x is equal to 1, x bar will be is equal to 0, right? So, this is the second input. This is the first input. This is the second input. When x is equal to 1, then x bar is equal to 0, then this tg1 will be off. So when the tg1 is off, tg1, so n1 is on, right? We have seen. n1 is on, n2 is off, the tg1 is off, the tg2 will be on. You see this. Because x is equal to 1 means x x is equal to 1 x is, so this will be on if this is on here we have in the capacitance y the portion of y will be charging see the y is charging y is charging from 0 to vdd what about y bar now nothing is happening no the y bar is like uh, what will happen already it was charged correct already it was charged Due to the x is equal to 1, the n mass 1 is on. If this is on, means there will be a dissipation from. So, through the y will be y bar, I can sorry, this is y, right? Which is y? Yes, the y bar is discharging through n1. That is varied it to 0. See here, when I am getting the value, both complementary output I am getting. Y bar will be logically 1 VDD, Y equal to 0. So, second case, I am getting Y bar will be 0, Y will be VDD. This is for both the plus sign. The circuit is energized. Now, what we need to do, after the charging is complete, note, we have to make it note clearly. Okay, this is the important note. After the charge is complete, this is the charge is complete, the output signal pair, that is y on y bar, output signal pair remains stable. And it can be used for next stage. Used as input to the next stage. 
Okay. Now we will see. Now second thing is here I can say. The amplifier is. Or I can say. The VA. The VA. If I do. VDD to. Zero. So means the VA we are going to zero actually. Like. Uh, this place. Because we said this place it was charging correct this will be your hold that is for stable next it will be recover this portion is recover that is the meaning of that when VA is a VDD to 0 then it is very important earlier I said circuit is energized here the circuit is D energized Analyze the voltage from VA to zero volt. So in this step, the very important thing what is the the energy was stored here actually. The energy that was stored in the C that capacitor C is transferred back to power supply that is a recovery circuit so only we said it's a recovery so that is why we need to design a power supply such like that that the energy that was stored in C already so when your power supply that is your VLS goes back to zero then again that uh, the, the whatever the, it was, the energy was stored in the C it would transfer back to the power supply so there is no dissipation here when it goes back to your, uh, this your voltage back to zero not only is going to say even it go back to to zero so now here this is the one of the very important thing so now from this I can say uh, the state of two transistor of the transmission gate like uh, uh, the VA will be ramps up and down between 0 and VDD like the uh, energy dissipation like if you can say like uh, both the transistors so both transistors both transistors operate in the non saturation region non saturation region in the middle part of the ramp actually middle part of the ramp in up and down that is how much uh, the range if I want to say between VTP and VDD minus VTN between this place because initially the N trend N mass will be on and it remains on till the output will reach as the VDD minus VTH so on the other hand if you want to say the P mass will be turned on when the ramp voltage attains the voltage with the threshold voltage and the it will be remains on till the maximum value so this is all about the adiabatic amplification here yeah, next to what we need to study we have to study about the adiabatic uh, we have to study about the adiabatic amplification in uh, like a full amplification or we need to do some derivation or we are, let us do some portion of derivation about this this is about the operation actually later we will study about how much the energy is stored in the load in this adiabatic uh, amplification circuit that we will calculate in the next class